Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Michael, KE4EST. And on the bench you are looking at a Dynalode, or that's what most in the industry call it. The transistor devices, don't forget incorporated. And this is a DLR50-15-150 Alpha. So, I'm going to go through this today and change out a couple parts and do some alignment on it. Um, and kind of talk about what it is. So, most of you are probably familiar with the different loads and whatever, but this is what's called an electronic load. And I know some people's not familiar with them as much or like, what is that thing? There's a bunch of different ones of them. This one here, I think, goes up to 15 amps. But it goes up to, it says 15 amps, I think. Anyway, so. This here is something you would use to put a load on something. You know, if you want to test something that you've designed yourself or you want to fix something. And there's a bunch of different, you know, uses for a load. To load, you know, a circuit down. But the easiest one to um, get it in your head, you're like, oh, say a power supply. Say you're a ham radio operator and you decide to design your own power supply. Or say you just build your own power supply. You know, you build it yourself from a schematic you found online or in a book or something like that. And you want to test it all out before you use it. And that's definitely something you'd want to do. And say it's a good one. It's got four or six pass transistors in it. It's good for, you know, 20 to 30 amps. And, you know, so, you know, really cool, man. I made my own power supply, which they're not too hard. You know, it's a good thing to, it's way better than, or way easier, put it that way, than making a, starting off with, say, building a HF rig or something. But a linear power supply, you know, a lot of things going to switch in is a lot switching supplies now. One thing I don't like about switching supplies is I don't care. It's just some of them's got, you know, Astron's getting it pretty good. But they still can put the hash and noise out on HF, you know, sometimes. And that's just the, that's just the nature of switching supplies. You get that high frequency switching going on in there. That's how you get away with the, you know, little light supplies. Where a linear supply, you don't have that. They're quiet. So they're, you know, great thing to start off with if you're new uh, to wanting to you know, you peel around with little circuits here and there, maybe some Arduino or microcontroller stuff, and you're like, I want to build something that's, you know, bigger and, but maybe not as complicated or not too complicated. And the linear power supply is, you know, a real good way to start off with. Find you something like this that's maybe the insides are gone or whatever. Let's make a good little power supply case right here. You already got some meters on it. So you get it built. And you're ready to test that power supply out. And you cross your fingers, you turn it on, you don't see no smoke. You know, your little, maybe if you got a meter on it, it goes over, and you've got a little pot in there. And you take that potentiometer, you adjust it, you put an extra meter on it, and it says 13.8 volts. And you're like, okay, cool. This thing's working. But what happens if you put a load on it? You know, if you got something wired wrong got something you know soldered wrong or you missed something somewhere you don't want to put your expensive even a two meter radio say you start with a little two meter radio you know some of those 150 200 radios that still ain't pocket change you don't want to hook that thing up to it put it on 50 watts or 75 watts and key down into a dummy load and see you know if it's going to handle it like okay well as soon as you key down you've got something wrong in that circuit and it all of a sudden shoots out 30 volts into your radio so this is what this would be for right here now in lieu of this you could string a bunch of big power resistors you know and things like that but this makes it small and compact this has got pass transistors in it this is a uh, you know an electronic way of doing it without um you're like well resistors ain't that electronics well it's a passive device. This here is an active device. It's got some circuitry in here and a pass transistors too. And it's got where it'll put the transistors 
we'll put a load on it you know and you can adjust that load on whatever you want to test and make sure it's up to snuff or whatever so if you're repairing something you want to make sure it's working or you want to you're built design something new these are really really handy to have so this one is the one I use and I thought it had a weird issue but it I guess it don't um, after I pull it down I was like well maybe it was something whatever with the wire or something I thought it was I thought itself was pulling down and not reading right when I was you know, doing loads and stuff so I take a external meter and put in line I'm like well it's putting the load on it it's showing the amperage pull Am amperage draw is showing up and but this is you know not reading it right I think it's just out of alignment but while I was doing it, I guess I could unplug it. I was going to demonstrate it later. I thought about demonstrating it a little bit, but this plug is paying the butt to get out the back of this thing. All right. Now, the thing about this one here is, in case you're looking like, where's it load at? It's on the back. So, like a lot of people, I bring wires out because you have this, you know, like in stuff over here. I've got stuff stuck in, you know. You ain't got much room to work. You don't reach back there every time through all them cracks and whatever. So I bring heavy gauge wires off of this and have them available over at the edge of the bench so I can just hook into this. Um, I wish it did have, you know, somewhere on the front here. Well, bring the camera back down. I wish it had them on the front somewhere. Well, I could hook right into it, but that's just the way they designed it. Some of them do have them on the front. But what I noticed was, let's have a look at this thing here. You uh, look in here, look at this Allen Bradley style resistors. Nothing's burnt. One chip. You know, it's not micro. A lot of these newer, all these, well, I should say all these newer electronic loads are all microprocessor controlled. And. This one's got just a one chip in there. Um, but all this, you know, is good stuff. I mean, and I bought this used, of course, you know, a while back. I don't remember how many years or whatever, but somebody I noticed has been in here. The, well, what it was was these capacitors here just do not seem right to me. So, I hunted around and found a schematic, and this is one of them deals where I looked everywhere and tried my Google Foo or Fire or whatever, they, and just could not find a schematic. I found plenty of manuals, could not find the schematic, except for places that wanted to sell the schematic, so... Um, I'm not supposed to be showing the schematic on camera, but I've got schematic here, and it uh, wasn't a whole lot to pay for it, but anyway, this schematic uh, is right. These, and these look way too new. This thing come out, this schematic's dated 1980. These are 10 microfarad 50 volt capacitors. The schematic says... 470 yeah yeah the schematic says 470 40 volt capacitors so the voltage is fine but you know it just you know it, you can't always go by this but see how this big block they've left plenty of room for you know bigger capacitor here and you know capacitors older capacitors you know years ago was bigger they've got them now you know smaller i can find a 10 microfarad capacitor you know, on something older, it'll be bigger than this. But technology's gotten better. So I thought, well, maybe that's in some... You know, I could just just look like somebody's changed this out. So, I pulled this board out. And you can see where I got the top off. I pulled this board out. And I'm going to pull it out right here again. I put it back in so anybody's got one of these wants to... Pretty straightforward, but that light. 
take this out. Now remember, when you're working on stuff like this, you know, be careful, make sure I've already done all the, make sure nothing's going to shock me, but you can get hurt working on this stuff, even though this ain't real high voltage, you can still get hurt, and there's still high voltage coming in. Or, you know, line voltage. But here's one nice thing. See if you can see this without moving the camera. So you can see I've already marked this. I was going to mark this. Pretty self explanatory, but, uh, you know, even if you see, here's a, a tip for you. You're taking something apart and you want to pull some connectors off. Even if you're like, yeah, I, I know where that's going to go back on. No big deal. I know exactly where that connector's got to go, so I ain't going to mark it. Always mark your connectors. So I mark the board, and I done two on this side, one on this side. You know, and you can do it wherever you want. Sometimes I go overboard, but then in a way you can't go overboard. But if this had like tons of connectors on it, I'm gonna take a bunch of pictures. Nowadays everybody's got a smartphone in their pocket. Take lots of pictures, different angles pictures. Take plenty of pictures. Cause when you take something apart. And say you're going to change out a part and you change that part and put it right back together. Usually, you know, you got it in your mind. You can just stick it back together. No big deal. What if something comes up that's unexpected? What if this? What if that? You know, and I've had it happen to me. And you don't get back to something for two or three months or a week or a, sometimes two or three days. You know, it's all it takes is a day or two to go, oh, crap. Now, which I've got two connectors that look the same. And nothing's labeled. And I see how this one here is dressed in. This wires has been lead dressing. They've done well. They not really lead dressing it. Well, it is, but they put this. So it kind of falls into place here. But if this wasn't here and whatever, you know, and if you especially had four or five more, the nice thing I like about this board is, which is it's still not too bad to work on this board, even with this stuff hooked up. Well, I thought that was easier than that. When you're doing stuff like this too, be careful don't stick your screwdriver under there and hit these tracings. See how these tracings are kind of got that bubbly look to them. It's just a, you know, you can really see it right there. It's just the old way they did stuff. You know, they started making circuit boards. Things was getting better, but things are still... Not as good as they're made today and of course you know it, that's getting to the point now where people say things ain't as good um it made things uh the people will say things are made better nowadays than what they used to be and in some things it is but it's starting to go the other way what's been going the other way things not as made as good as they used to be so it really depends so I guess I should say the technology and circuit board design and or circuit board manufacturing process has gotten better. Um, that you know, those things definitely things have gotten to be made cheaper and they rush through things and you know the story on that. Things are just not as good as they used to be and a lot of things. All right, there we go. So see, I get that board right out of there. And this I let's got while we're talking about it. We got these two electrolytic capacitors here. And that little tiny one down there, it's 3.3. If you want to take one apart, clean it up, line it up, and change your capacitors out while you're in there. And that's what somebody's done here. Let me lay that there. Set this back out of the way. this back over here so I don't know if you can tell yeah you can tell if you can tell on camera look at the difference in the shininess of that right there here is the where the capacitors go in look at this did a good job 
But why 10 microfarad? I mean, is that all they had? And just, oh, it'll be good enough. I mean, it works. It's a filter capacitor off the power supply. There's a transformer off the power supply. And it's mainly used, it powers up, you know, the circuitry here. And just to put out some voltage to, you know, simulate a, you know, hook it to a battery charger. And simulate the voltage from a battery. And, you know, check the charge into the battery charger mainly. So, like, a lot of times I don't even use this circuit anyway. But while we're in here, we're going to fix that. And here's all your adjustment pots. So, I mean, there's not much more to say about this. Um, if anybody cares, this is Revision E board. If you've got one and yours looks a little different, well, that might be why. But, and everything I can find documentation, these came out in 1980. So, 41 years old, still works great. Um, so, and we'll get into another video on the problem I ran into. And it wasn't this, but it's a good thing I took this apart. Because the meters are off on the front a little bit. So I want to line them up and all that. And just these pots so that the, when I'm actually drawing one amp, I want the meter on the face of the unit to say one amp. So, let's see if I can do this on camera I'm going to change out those capacitors and put in what I've got now see this you can get away with I don't have 470 microfarad 40 volt capacitors but I've got 100 volts now that's definitely anytime you change out a capacitor you can go up on the voltage don't ever go below the voltage but can't just eh, 10 microfarads is good enough. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so let's see here. I don't know if I've ever done soldering on camera, so we're going to try. I had a couple of guys request that. So, anyway, this is my disordering pump. I need to, uh, I like using the brrr, brrr, <laughs> the plug in the wall ones, but I'm going to show this because most people have these or where's my other little one or something like this. This is spraying load. You press it down. There's a plunger in here that goes down in, you know, it's like a cylinder. And when you push this button, this comes back real fast and draws a vacuum and pulls the solder up but this one here is a lot better this is a off brand but it works so first thing you want to do now this one here i probably don't have to but i'm going to anyway to show you in case anybody's curious what you're going to want to do i'm going to tip all let's see are you seeing this i'm not seeing it like i want you to see it but Wish this, let's see, let me elevate something with something here. I see some strange that's going on here, but I've got one of those circuit board holders. You know what, let me just try that. I didn't think about, let me try that. It may work. Hang on just a second. All right, we're gonna try that. We got a little bit of a glare here. But I'm going to try that anyway. I think you can see right here pretty good. Um, this one here, like I said, I probably don't have to. But if you get some old solder that's been around for a year, especially if it's something that's made like in the 40s or 50s or whatever, it just works. I don't know. I've just learned over the years that if you add a little fresh solder to it, point is take solder away not add solder so you can take this thing out are you crazy add a little fresh solder to it like that cock your gun here <laughs> just come in there and get it heated up put this right down on there see I'm, I'm not having try like this 
this and this on camera short is, is different I can't put pressure like I want to with this thing and you're like why did you put that transformer up there when you put it at the bottom well it's worked out better that way but I don't like the way I can't All right, and then we come in here. Just be careful too. Don't put, you know, you got enough heat to do it job. It's how it's bubbling up and all that I was talking about. Don't uh, try to stay off of these traces and try to not go crazy. Bring that heat in there. You see it melting. Go. So here's not so bad on this side. I remember there's circuit tracings on the other side. Okay. Let's see what that has did for us. Get around. Yeah, slide around. I'll come right out of there. No, don't force them. I'm just seeing if they're. You see how there's. You know, this thing just ain't working out, is it? The solder's come up on this side too. It's got plated through holes. So you gotta be careful, or at least this side is. So, we're gonna have to take the solder out on that side too. What you can do is just heat it up and pull it out. And, and I tell you, I've got that thing, you can see the spring is all the way over. Wait, that thing's not. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, for some reason though, this one here. That's a little bit more. It would, I usually don't have this much problem, but I think it's just working on cameras, making it a little more. That's another thing. I can't get it to take the heat. I don't have a you gotta have something there to transfer the heat. So adding solder will help get down in there to do that. Still won't be a bugger. So sometimes what you have to do is very, very carefully. Sometimes you have to just cut the leads and then take it out again. Sometimes you have to. What they've done is angled this so much. Do it like that. Heat it up, and if you can get to the other side, and just very gently take it out. And then see, I've got this one leg loose here. Now I can that is that heating. Well, it's heating all right. There it goes. Okay. Get somewhere out of the way here. Then you can go back in. Yeah, this thing's just not working out for this. That's that heavy transformer on it. Put that over there. But I can go back in 
and I will not clean your holes out. Go back in and clean your holes out. Things not full. I know you can't see everything I'm doing here, but I think that's got him. Okay. So let me get the uh, capacitors in, and I'll be right back. And before I come right back, let me say something else I didn't mention. When you're taking out, well, that transformer making this goofy. In it. When you're taking out something, a part like this that's a polarized part. Now this one's marked on the board. There's a plus and print season, plus and print season. Well, there's a minus over here, but there's so you know which side's plus. You know what's what's the positive side of the part. So this would go in like this because on these here, the arrows always pointing to the negative side. But if you uh, sometimes it's not like that. There's it ain't marked. It's just there's a lot of things I've come across like that. Go in and mark it before you take it out. Especially if it's something you got a schematic for or nothing like that. You say, okay, minus is pointing that way, so put your plus on the board. Heck, put your plus on one side of it and a minus on the other. You know, make sure it's clear, make sure you can see it. And that's another really good reason to take a lot of pictures. Because if I take a picture, even if it's like this in the picture, you say, well, it was like that in the picture, so I can't see which way is plus and minus. Well, in the picture, you can see that the 19's upside down. If I try to put the 19 in like this, then I'm going to have the capacitor backwards. You see what I'm saying? So take pictures, mark it, do all that stuff. And let me get these in, and I'll be right back. Another thing I like to do when I'm putting these in, you've not noticed, and all my stuff. I know, especially if these things are put together in the machine, or somebody's working out there putting these in on assembly line, if they're putting them in solder and hand solder and everything there's it's a job you're doing it all day you're just oh let's get these parts in you know i'm thinking what i gotta do when i get home and whatever but i like to you know instead of throwing it in there i like to turn it make sure you're oriented right so you get your orientation correct i like to turn it do it like that and say okay i'm just gonna go that way so then you can push your leads down like that to put your part in but see when you're done you know if you ever have to come back to something like this or somebody else they can just glance in and see what it is for instead of microfarads at 100 volts you ain't got to do all this twisting on the capacitor stuff and all that all right let's solder in the new ones now these are going to stay pretty good sometimes you can slightly bend the leads to help them, you know, stay in, you flip it over. But these are going to stay in pretty good. So we're going to make sure you got it heated and up and it's around them. Come up. But don't leave it your dwell time way too long. I'm going to come in and these take a, you know, something like this is going to take a little bit. Long, I mean a little bit, a couple of seconds. That's what I mean by a little bit. To get that hot. Make sure it's good. Now some of the stuff you don't want to dwell that long on, but I'm gonna come in, make sure you're hitting something else that you shouldn't be hitting. I'm trying to do this on camera. Bring your solder in. And you can see, you can watch it kind of fall like I'm Got my solder and iron here on the back side of the lead for just a second to heat everything up. And then you bring your solder into it. Give it a second and you watch it flow around the part. Always leave a little bit of solder on the end of your iron before you put it in so your tip will last. 
we got it. Now go back in. With your little pair of dikes. There. There we go. All right, let me get this back in the unit and we will do an alignment.